The results from the Halo Reach MCC PC Flighting Flight 1 information has just come in for us and Postman's put up a thing online to have us go look over all the details. We're going to go over that. We're going to talk about what they took away from it, what they're learning from it, and to progress forward with the flighting program. And ultimately, information on Flight 2 when it comes to Firefight and Halo Reach on PC. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news commentary today. We're talking about the MCC flighting program for Halo Reach on MCC, PC, all these different kind of acronyms and everything else in between. Basically, awesome information you need to know if you're a Halo fan. So if you like these news information videos, please make sure to tap that like button. Let me know if you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the video and channel. If you're new to the channel or want to stay up to date with anything Halo related, Halo Infinite, MCC, Halo 5, everything in between, the Halo TV show, make sure to tap subscribe with the bell because we all know sub feeds can be kind of weird at times. Let's get right into the video. So if you guys remember from Flight 1 of Halo Reach on PC, it was essentially the tip of the spear mission that people got a chance to play over on PC just over and over again. Just that one mission. There's some decent amount of settings you can probably customize a little bit there with key bindings and field of view and stuff like that, but nothing too crazy customizable or anything in between. It was mainly just a way for before 3 to test out their pipelines of being able to you know, provide access for people to download the games from locations they want to provide it through, through mainly through Steam. The other goal of the first flight was to test out various hardware settings to kind of make sure they can confirm that what they have people running this game on, they can actually run pretty well from anybody around because you never truly understand the aspects of what specs you need for a game until you actually hand it off to the wild, have them get a chance to play it. So I'm sure with this recent flighting program uh, for Flight 1, they helped kind of build out a little bit what their recommended specs would be on PC for the uh, Halo Reach on PC, which I would assume not to be too crazy. Uh, but that's uh, we'll probably figure out later on in uh, the flighting program as well. So in this video, Postums put up a thing on Halo Waypoint just talking about their results of what they have from the flight program, what they learned from it, what they're going to move forward, and like I said, information about Flight 2. So, let's get right into the results of Flight 1. So, according to 343, Flight 1 was a total success, which is, well, obviously, I'd love to hear that when it comes to these flighting programs. There are actually some stats for us to kind of break down for this our first flighting program. It said 60.7% of people who were invited to the program were actually people who downloaded and played the game. I'm just saying that percentage might have been a little bit higher if a certain someone who's making a video talking about the game right now would have been invited, but hey, you know what? It's all good. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, times played the mission, what, or at least I guess times it was up, uh, people loaded into the game, 1,757 times. I was like just under the 1,000 people, probably around 900 people that were actually invited to this program. So at least the total amount of people that were invited twice it was played over twice as much as that which is really great to see that people are that enthusiastic to play just one mission of reach on pc which is super cool and the uh, survey response was basically uh, at the end of all these flights at least from the mcc side of things when i was in that flying program uh that 343 would send out surveys kind of giving you your a good okay bad great kind of scale of one through five of different kind of questions and the survey generally got an average score of 4.6 out of five which I mean, sounds pretty great to me. Like that's a that's a success right there. Now you might kind of hear 60% for people on the flighting program being that might be kind of low. And they're like, yeah, well, compared to where it was on the MCC, it's actually right about where it was, if not a little bit higher. And if also since it was such short notice on this last flighting, and literally it was like the day of, like play it now. You only have the weekend. You know, we never got like a really true good like notification letting people know when the flighting program was happening. Like, if you were on Twitter and you just kind of like check periodically check things out like on your insider app you might have missed it and i'm sure that happened to a lot of people as well and or if you, you know you plan to travel for a weekend and like it just happened that weekend kind of thing you know so that, that, that kind of stuff just kind of happens two for three also mentions that they were kind of expecting maybe a little bit lower percentage just because it is a campaign mission and you know everyone would probably it would probably be a lot higher if it was a multiplayer mission or multiplayer aspect of the flighting program and probably have a lot higher retention rate more plays and stuff like that but for it being campaign just one mission it's uh, i think it turned out pretty well and then it seems like uh, 343 seems to agree with that and they learned a lot from it as well so many of the key takeaways and learnings that 343 took away from the whole thing they broke it down into four categories 
first category is communication. It's the lesson say what they learned from last year's flight in program is to build a new system that directly communicates with all the flight participants. Just improve that, make it less of a hassle for people who played the flights to give their feedback. So uh, that's, uh, that's great to hear. I'm sure they're also going to take these learnings and apply it to Halo Infinite as well. Once that flying program happens, uh, content and engagement was another part. Like I said earlier, that what they were expecting, they kind of reiterated that as a saying that they were kind of expecting lower turnout just because of it being just a campaign mission. They did see that people played it multiple times over and such a, such a small group as well that they're looking to engage more people into the second flight, which Crossing their fingers were in that flying program, guys. A technical issue for reporting that they noticed was that a lot of people were going to the community section of the Halo support uh, site to kind of vent or talk about or give any kind of feedback. And they were like, mm, that's not exactly what that's really made for. You're meant to create a ticket and kind of let people know what's going on if you're having like real technical issues with your flighting program, not just post on a forum. Just be like, my thing doesn't work. Well, the, one of the major feedbacks that 343 received from the fan base about this first flight was take your time on development. People want to make sure that when 343 releases this on MCC on PC that it's done properly. As all of us Halo fans know, we know we have experienced what it's like rushing a product out as in the MCC and you can't have that happen again with the MCC. So I fully understand the team taking their time to make sure it's done properly. I mean, I... At this point though, I think it's okay to kind of maybe just push a product out as long as it works and kind of gives you very minimal uh, setups that you would like when it comes to PC, but as long, as long as people get a chance to just get their hands in and play it, even if they can't change like the FOV or something like that, I think just being able to like change key bindings, be able to play the base game, I think people would just be happy with that at the moment. Maybe you can patch in the updates later on, but I guess first impressions are very important. And, uh, you know, obviously with this being the very first MCC PC game, it's going to be extra scrutinized. So I can understand why they want to take their time to make sure this is very well done. Because obviously all the news articles when the MCC comes to PC are going to be talking about Halo Reach and how it performed. And lastly, for the feedback for the fourth part, it was basically just saying thank you for your patience. Uh, we do know, they do recognize that this is taking a while and people are being patient about it. And they do, and 3 for 3 is just saying that we, they appreciate you guys letting them take their time to get this done because we all want this so badly, we want it done right. And I'm glad 343 is taking the time to do just that. And also people who were not invited to the first flying program, they said, be patient, eventually you guys will get involved with the flying program. And uh, that kind of leads into us into our next section here as when the next flight program is going to happen. It sounds pretty much confirmed at this point. And it sounds like the flighting program for Firefight, which would be a part of Flight 2, is going to happen potentially at the end of July. And I'll quote here on the website here saying, while things may shift, we're currently targeting this milestone for later this month. The team is beginning to review release candidates that have a core features to support this flight. Keep your eyes out for upcoming news articles in the near future. And trust me, when that information goes live, when this, I will let you guys know on this channel as soon as possible once we have a confirmed date when the flying program will happen and all the content that's going to be involved with. So you guys, that's the recent update we got for MCC. Basically, that 343 was surprised by how many people came to play the first flight. Understandable, though. I think that they kind of have their set their expectations kind of low. And then when we do come out in force, they're like, wow overwhelmed with joy on that one pretty much and also that the uh, next flight and they did learn a lot from that first flight as well they took that into consideration when it comes to this next flight on top of that which the next flight looks like will be happening at the end of july hopefully your boy here gets part of flight two get to play some firefight for you guys on stream i would love to do that you just need to be able to get access and hopefully we get that for you guys so if you guys want to stay up to date with anything halo related like when the next flame program when you get a release date for that make sure you tap subscribe on the channel guys we, we will make a video as soon as possible when that information does come out for you everybody uh follow me on twitter that's the best way to get your news as soon as possible because i'll retweet i'm very active on twitter here guys uh, links in the description down below if you're new to the channel or catch up with anything here make sure you tap subscribe like i said uh if you're new if you like this video if you find it informational please make sure to tap that like button as well as it greatly helps out the video and channel if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me check out the videos on the screen right now i'll catch you all in the next video peace out